So there's going to be a near-Earth asteroid flyby uh, this Friday. Right. Now, imagine if we were to th- shoot a uh, a capsule a out. A Wally-sized robot. 55-pound uh-huh. little uh, electronic bot uh, out to the asteroid. And it were to attach itself and then follow the uh, asteroid out into the <laughs> asteroid belt. Oh, where I, was, I was already mining. There. Oh, mine! It, it will it will mine uh, the asteroid, <laughs> yes. and then it will also uh, have a three D printer installed on it, which will print other fireflies that will then release to other asteroids, where they can then sample, uh, pull samples from those asteroids. That so, is the ultimate goal of deep space. So just industries. imagine exactly. So just imagine you know being able to go to your Wikipedia page right. and uh, you want to learn about a certain asteroid but you know you don't just know the distance to Earth or its orbit. You know what it's, it's made of. Physical makeup. You know it's uh, sister asteroids maybe mm-hmm. or however you and, can And oh relate by the way you can watch a live camera feed that the Firefly robot has installed on that asteroid and left there uh, before it moved on. Now this sounds very pie in the sky, but Deep Space Industries <laughs> and its chairman, uh, Rick Tomlinson, is basically saying that they're going to launch the first one in the next like two to three years. It's going to be about 70 pounds. It's going to go to an object that they, with NASA's help, identify, and then it's going to mine some material and bring back 70 to 150 pounds, and again, eventually have 3D printing technology, zero gravity 3D printing technology, they say they've already pretty much got, that will allow it to build pretty much like, eventually, space stations, just from the materials that they mine. And so this is, you know, just a year after Planetary Resources, you know, who James Cameron was behind, uh, came out and said that they want to go and mine asteroids. But it was never with the intention of keeping the mining there and producing things on the asteroids. It was to bring it back to Earth and bring precious metals back to Earth, which is cool in and of itself. But this just takes it to a whole new level. But it is fascinating that we have multiple companies out there saying, yeah, yeah, let's go mine these asteroids, Mm -hmm. eh? That's pretty cool. And Tomlinson made a great point in the press release that, you know, he has more technology in his iPhone or, you know, a new tablet than the Apollo 13 mission had. So, you know, just a couple years ago, just a year ago, the planetary resources mindset has evolved to, you know, and maybe that pushed Rick Tomlinson to be like, hey, like, that's a good idea, but... Oh, I think both companies are going to push each other, right? It's scientific piggybacking, you know, and mm-hmm. that's one of those things that, whether it's public investment through NASA or private investment through things like SpaceX, planetary resources, deep space industries, it just, it's going to have... You know, just like the Apollo missions did back in the day, it's going to have long-term amazing benefits to the rest of the society.